Ray Jones, their outstanding guard, has to be the king. They don't blame me. Daryl Cruz, Devin Eva. A weapon tell you! Kirby Brooks on the two-pointer. Dallas Nichols wins the game! Alexander. It's a dunk right at his feet. Send it in, Jones! Staten takes the ball to the left side, spins, shoots, layup, shot, good! Oh, He's got that Carter trump ball! Javon Carter is in Trey Young's head. Butler, into the lane, in the traffic, it goes again! West Virginia has won its first Big East championship! They're going wild here at the Coliseum. So long, Big Blue! Hello, Golden Blue! The West Virginia Mountaineers are going to the Final Four! It is a great night to be a Mountaineer, wherever you may be! And now, it's the show brought to you by Mountaineer fans, for Mountaineer fans, the Country Rose Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into episode 5 of the 2023-2024 edition of the CRW Hoops Podcast. Here continuing to cover the West Virginia men's basketball season as we progress through it. Tough loss to UMass there in the late closing minutes of the game there in the 10th game of the WVU basketball season, especially after we thought we were really going to have some positive additions to the roster, and we certainly did with the return of Noah Farrakhan and Kerr Creesa, but still awaiting the return of Raekwon Battle. We'll likely get to see that in this upcoming game against Radford that we'll preview at the tail end of this episode. Before we get there, we'll review the loss to UMass, go over the stats in that game a little bit. But before we get into either one of those games, we got to lead this podcast episode off the way we always like to, and that's, of course, with a little bit of Mountaineer news. All right, and as we covered last episode on the Mountaineer News segment, Raekwon Battle and Noah Farrakhan had the temporary restraining order, the ability to potentially play for at least 14 days, but it was unknown if West Virginia was going to be willing to play them due to the fact of the NCAA stating that players that play during that 14-day window would then be deemed ineligible if they went back on the ruling on December 27th. Since the NCAA came out and said that, they actually put in a longer temporary restraining order that runs all the way through the spring season. So transfers for the fall sports here are automatically eligible to play. That's how we saw Noah Farrakhan in the game for sure. We saw Raekwon battle. I think West Virginia had made the decision they were going to play them anyways. But once that was passed, it doesn't matter. They're eligible no matter what. So we saw Noah Farrakhan, and soon we'll get to see Raekwon battle. So positive news for West Virginia for sure as they have a couple of great additions to the roster, we saw Noah Farrakhan in action. We'll talk about his performance, and it was a good one in the game against UMass when we get into the review of that game. And hopefully here in the near future, we're going to see Raekwon battle in this game against Radford. And he has the potential to be the very best player on West Virginia's roster, especially when it comes to scoring. And we know how lethal this West Virginia offense can be with all of these guys in the fold now as we saw West Virginia put up a lot more offensive numbers than they had throughout the rest of the season, especially from beyond the arc. And uh, Raekwon Battle and Noah Farrakhan can certainly contribute to that. So positive news for West Virginia heading into the game. But then, unfortunately, coming out of the UMass game, we were hit with some negative news. Seems like West Virginia just can't get ahead. It's one step forward and two steps back for the Mountaineers, it seems like, throughout this basketball offseason, preseason, and now during the season as well as things have continued to happen. Let's talk about the latest gut punch for West Virginia here as we wrap up Mountaineer news. And that, unfortunately, is the news that came out this week that West Virginia center Jesse Edwards, the leader of this team in many ways, will be out for at least four weeks moving forward on the season with a fractured wrist that will require surgery. You see this shared over on WVSportsNow.com. And, of course, the great pitcher of Jesse Edwards dunking over the two pit players on that alley-oop dunk. Hopefully he has that framed or somebody gets that framed because that's an awesome uh, picture nonetheless. But uh, West Virginia center Jesse Edwards will mix four weeks due to a fractured right wrist. The basketball program announced he injured it during the game against UMass, and we know Jesse Edwards struggled a bit more than normal in that game, especially scoring-wise, and I think we now have a reason for that, uh, some of his poor performance than 
especially compared to what we had seen from him already throughout the season. And obviously with an injured wrist, uh, he was probably struggling there. Tried to play with it taped up, but nonetheless, he learns after the game it's unfortunately fractured. And West Virginia now will have to try and make do without their starting big man for the next four weeks. You're going to see Pat Sumnick step up into an expanded role and a cook a cook play as many minutes as he potentially can right now with his health concerns. But Pat Sumnick certainly going to have a much bigger role on this team with Jesse Edwards out. So unfortunately for Mountaineer fans, some negative news followed what was finally a positive break for the West Virginia men's basketball program. Seemed like we were going to have this full roster intact as it finally seems like now we're going to have Raekwon Battle and Noah Farrakhan to join Kirk Carissa and Akuka Cook who have been playing, but we won't have Jesse Edwards for at least four more weeks. So seems like it'll be into 2024 a good bit there before we finally get a chance to see this West Virginia basketball team in its full form. But that will wrap us up here on Mountaineer News. Wanted to touch on the Jesse Edwards injury and, of course, the now eligible status of Noah Farrakhan and Raekwon Battle. But now that we've done that, let's dive in on a review of the game against UMass before we look ahead and preview the upcoming 11th game of the season against the Radford Highlanders. <laughs> All right, as I'm sure you well know now, West Virginia unfortunately fell to UMass 87-79 to to drop to 4-6 and six currently on the 2023-2024 campaign. I believe in our prediction show I had West Virginia uh, winning 79-75. to So had West Virginia score 79 right, unfortunately, they just gave up 87 there to UMass. Uh, some big shots late there from the Minutemen. And uh, especially a good performance from a guard there in Davis, who hadn't really done much for them up to this point in the season prior to this game against West Virginia. But of course, leave it to a game against the Mountaineers for someone to have a breakout contest going six of eight from beyond the three point line. And that really hurt West Virginia. And there were some big shots late there that really allowed UMass to pull away there at the end when West Virginia had a strong second half and looked like they were going to have a chance to win the game there at the end. But despite the loss, I think there were some positives that really came out of this game for West Virginia. So let's take a look at some these statistics that came out of that game. Obviously, West Virginia got up a ton of shots, shooting 70 field goals in this game, hitting 40% of those compared to 44% for UMass. From the three-point line, this is what was most probably positive for me coming out of this game is West Virginia hitting 14 threes. I think the return of Kerr Carissa and West Virginia having that good success from the three-point line definitely go hand in hand. I mentioned, you know, having him orchestrating the offense, things should move smoother, and they certainly did in this game, and West Virginia certainly found some looks and found, you know, more shooters beyond the arc, I think, as well when you add Noah Farrakhan in the mix and Kerr Carissa. Let's not forget that he can shoot the basketball as well, but, you know, a lot of the things that I talked about in the preview show I think held true as far as, you know, more assists, less turnovers, and the offense just operating better. You saw, you know, some good looks for Seth Wilson. Uh, Kirk Kreese really hit a lot of shots in this game. Thought that he stepped up in Raekwon Battle's absence. And so I'm really excited to see how this looks once West Virginia finally has everyone all together. Hopefully, you know, coming up here in just a month or so, we'll get to see that. But at least coming up in this game against Radford, I think we'll get to see it with Raekwon Battle attached. So looking forward to that. Uh, for the three-point percentage for UMass, they hit 38% compared to West Virginia's successful 45%. 9 of 12 at the free throw line for West Virginia. Good percentage there, 75. I would like to see him get to the line more if you had your druthers there. Uh, whereas UMass got to the line 32 times, 25 of 32, 78% for the minute men. <laughs> And this is the area that hurt West Virginia a ton in this game. And I think we all know it's hurt West Virginia a lot at this season, especially in some crucial situations. You think back to that game against, I believe it was Virginia, right, when that offensive rebound kind of did West Virginia in there at the end. Uh, but yet again, rebounds hurt West Virginia in this contest. 47 for UMass to only 32 for the Mountaineers, out-rebounded by 15 on the glass. And the fact that you are already struggling there, really, you know, makes it a concern now moving forward. Without Jesse Edwards, you're going to really have some guys have to step up and hit the glass hard in Jesse Edwards' absence as this already has been a weak point for West Virginia at times, especially giving up offensive rebounds to other teams, and that was the case yet again. UMass was able to grab 13 of those, um, and that hurt West Virginia in that aspect as well. UMass had 21 assists, but West Virginia did have 17 assists. I talked about I thought we'd see a higher number of assists and a better assist to turnover ratio. We saw both of those things, seven assists versus only 11 turnovers for West Virginia. They did force UMass to commit 14 turnovers, but like I said, they counteract that with uh, 21 assists, and uh, UMass forced five steals. West Virginia had four of their own, one block for the Mountaineers, 
Two for the minute men. Uh, fast break points, big difference here as well, 34 to 15. I thought West Virginia would be able to get out and run more with Kerr Creasa. Uh, I think, you know, some of the other players being out, you know, Raekwon Battle and, of course, Jesse Edwards not being fully healthy in this game affected that a little bit. I think West Virginia will do better in the fast break game in the future. But I think, obviously, in this game, some of these numbers don't bear it out. But as you see here, but the largest lead there on the screen, if you're watching on the video version, UMass got all the way up to an 18-point lead in this game. So, I think, yet again, the one thing you can say about this West Virginia men's basketball team throughout this season is they've been very resilient. They've been shown ways to battle back in games, you know, fight – find ways to make most of them close there at the end. They just haven't quite found that winning recipe quite yet to be able to secure a victory late in one of these close games. Hopefully that's coming here in the near future. And I think having a guy like Raekwon battle back on the court that can make shots for you in critical and clutch situations could really help that. But I really loved West Virginia's effort in the second half to battle back in this game, a game in which they trailed by 15 at halftime. They really put on a strong second half performance to make it a game there that they had a chance to win at the end. Unfortunately, UMass pulls away for the 87 to 79 win but wanted to go over some of the team stats there now let's look at some of the individual numbers from this game before we dive in on a preview of the upcoming game against Radford to wrap up episode five here of the CRW Hoops podcast but before we get into these individual numbers I want to say appreciate you guys tuning into this episode now I know that uh, this new look West Virginia basketball team has a lot of people excited about the potential and you know speaking of potential if you want to be able to reach your full potential to an even greater degree the one way that I can recommend you to be able to do that is by using Magic Mind. It certainly helps you in a lot of aspects. It's helped me a ton since I've discovered it. I've talked about my coffee usage a ton. You know, I used to drink it from morning to night. Now I'm down to a cup or even half a cup of day sometimes and still have the same amount of energy, but less stress, less anxieties, less jitter, all of that good stuff, all thanks to Magic Mind. And the best part about it is it's great for you health-wise as well. All natural ingredients, matcha, lion's mane mushroom, and you know it's keto-friendly, paleo-friendly, vegan, all of those great things as well. So can't recommend it enough. I've recommended it to a few people, and they've really enjoyed enjoyed it as well when they've headed over to magicmind.com slash country roads where you can even use the code confidential20 to get 50% off a subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase. But hey, I get it. You know, you're a little bit skeptical. You don't want to buy an entire box of something before you've even tried it. Well, I've got good news for you on that end as well. And that's because Magic Mind is going to be available individually in Sprouts Farmers Market starting in January. So if you want to just give an individual bottle a try, head out to a Sprouts Farmers Market market starting in January. Give it a try, but I promise you're going to love it. Then once you want more, you're going to be hooked. You're going to want more of it. Come back here, hop online, head over to our exclusive link, magicmind.com slash country roads, and then enter the code confidential20 to get 50% off that subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase. And we really hope that you choose to do that, not only for our benefit, but for your own as well here on the Country Roads webcast. But having said that, let's hop in here on some of the numbers with West Virginia's individual players in this game against UMass. I think standing out to me, obviously, bench scoring, stepping up in a big way. A lot of that coming from Noah Farrakhan. Don't want to, you know, bury the lead here. Told you we would talk about him a little bit here, and I wanted to wait till the individual numbers to be able to do this. But you see, 18 minutes, and he went 7 of 11 from the field, 1 of 1 from the three-point line, scored 15 points, and dished out four assists in a short time in the ball game, as well as stealing one ball away from UMass. I think, obviously, the only downside, really, that you see there, obviously, he fouled out in only 18 minutes. Going to have to try and keep him on the floor for an extended period. But I think, to me, we obviously knew about the athleticism, as he had shown that, you know, in the Mountaineer Madness event with the Dunk contest performance, but he really in this game, I thought, stood out with his ability to score the basketball as well. I knew he could get to the rim, but I didn't know that he could shoot it as well as he showed in this game also. So, great ability to attack the basket, but also, you know, he hit the only three-pointer that he attempted. That was good to see. So, I think Noah Farrakhan can really be a huge bright spot for this team off the bench, and not only does it help you with your bench scoring? But I think it helps Kobe Johnson's game as well because I think he's a little bit better playing off the basketball when he's not having to worry about running the offense. That allows him to, you know, obviously exert more energy on the defensive end as well where, you know, the coaching staff has talked about they want him to be able to 
cover the other team's best players in the backcourt, um, he'll be able to, you know, do that better when he's not having to worry about staying out of foul trouble and stuff because he has to be, the, you know, the main point guard for this basketball team because now you have Kirk Kreese as a starter. You have Noah Farrakhan that can spell him, and you even have Jeremiah Brimbury down the line who you can give some reserve minutes to if necessary, as we saw earlier in the season. So I think Noah Farrakhan's performance really bodes well for West Virginia in the future of this season. That's one thing that I wanted to mention in terms of bench scoring, but he wasn't the only one that played well off the bench. Seth Wilson, six points, hitting both of its field goals, two or two from beyond the arc. You love to see that. I think he's going to really benefit from Kirk Reese and some of these other guys being back that can drive and kick to him. I would just like to see him get more shots up than the two. We'll see if he's able to do that moving forward. A cook, a cook, four points and two rebounds off the bench. The most minutes we've seen him play since his return. Hopefully that role continues to grow. We're going to need it to now in Jesse Edwards' absence. We'll see if he's healthy enough to slide into the starting lineup. We would love to see him be able to do that, obviously. Great performance for JoJo Harris, I thought, off the bench. 10 points, 6 rebounds, 2 or 4 from beyond the arc. You love to see that. But getting into the starters for West Virginia, Kerr Kreese, obviously got to talk about him and his debut finally returning from his suspension. 20 points, 7 assists two rebounds, 6 of 16 from the field, 6 of 15 from beyond the arc. Obviously put up a bunch of shots. West Virginia needed him to, I think, in Raekwon Battle's absence. And I really was pretty happy with his performance. Played 36 minutes, you know, nearly going the entire game, say for a few minutes there, and uh, thought that he played really well. And like I said, I'm just excited to see what West Virginia looks like when they have him orchestrating things and have everyone there fully healthy. You have Raekwon Battle and you have Jesse Edwards. We're going to see him work with Raekwon Battle, I think, in this game against Radford. But imagine having, you know, Raekwon Battle there as a threat on the outside among the other shooters that I just named. And then, of course, you still can throw lob to Jesse Edwards. I think it's going to be really good to see how West Virginia's offense operates once all those pieces are around. But Kirk Cree, so, you know, 20 points in his debut. Uh, officially, West Virginia's leading scorer, I guess. 20 points a game in his one game right now. Finally, some Someone leading West Virginia in scoring other than Quinn Slazinski. But how about Slazinski, though? Another 20-point performance for him, 25-2 and one steal. Not his best shooting performance from the field, but he did hit five of six from the free throw line. I think he's going to continue to be a go-to guy for West Virginia. And, you know, once Jesse Edwards is healthy again, he can really benefit from a lot of these pieces being around because, you know, Raekwon Battle can attack, Noah Farrakhan can attack, Kirk Kreese can attack. And, you know, defenses have to worry about Jesse Edwards on the lob, a cook, a cook stretching out the defense defense from the three-point line, as well as Quinn Slazinski. So West Virginia could be able to hurt teams in a lot of ways, I think, if they get this full roster intact in the near future. Ofri Neve, not his best performance. You know, pretty much a zero across the stat line there, save for one turnover and one personal foul think that that's, you know, obviously the low point for him at of this season. So nowhere to go but up from there, I think, for him is the good part. Jesse Edwards, obviously, we talked about it. Most struggles we've seen from him, we were wondering why. Now we know it's because of the injury is why he went one of seven from the field in his minimal action there, two points, three rebounds, and uh, four personal fouls. Kobe Johnson did not score, unfortunately, in Kirk Reese's return. You know, we had saw some really good games from Kobe Johnson recently. Got to have him, you know, back to that performance that he was putting on in Kirk Kreese's absence. Hopefully he's not feeling slighted by that return or anything, but I think Kobe Johnson's going to be an important piece of this West Virginia team, especially on the defensive end. They really like him there in that role. So there's some of the individual numbers from the unfortunate loss to UMass where we saw some players return, but hopefully now we're talking about the debut of Raekwon Battle as a Mountaineer in this upcoming game against Radford. So let's dive in here on a brief preview of that game, and I'll provide a prediction here as we wrap up Episode 5 the 2023-2024 edition of the CRW Hoops Podcast. All right, diving in on a preview of the upcoming West Virginia men's basketball game, which will be the 11th of the season. They'll welcome in 9-4 and four Radford to take on our currently 4-6 and six West Virginia Mountaineers in the Coliseum. So I guess if there is a silver lining to Raekwon Battle not debuting in the previous game, it's the fact that he will get to debut in front of a home crowd at the Coliseum in Morgantown, likely. It's going to be on ESPN Plus, 7 o'clock tip there on December 20th. So, you know, that's also National Signing Day, so I'm sure – Throughout the morning, you'll be checking out signing day coverage here on the Country Roads webcast YouTube channel for the Mountaineer football team and then get a chance to watch the Mountaineer Basketball Club 
take on the Radford Highlanders and a familiar face coming in as the head coach of Radford. Of course, Darius Nichols leading that program as they come into Morgantown looking to hopefully, you know, beat West Virginia, but West Virginia is looking to bounce back in what looks to be the debut of Raekwon Battle in their first game. Also playing without Jesse Edwards, so going to be interesting to see how West Virginia looks in this one. But as far as ESPN's feelings on it, they still feel pretty confident about West Virginia's chances. 67% chance to win for West Virginia versus a 34% chance for Radford. Most recently, these two teams, as for Radford, they've won four out of their last five, most recently coming off a win over Bucknell. West Virginia, unfortunately, has lost three out of their last five, and we just talked about the most recent loss to UMass following the win over Drexel. But let's look at the team statistics. Uh, points per game, 75 for Radford, 66 for the Mountaineers. Like I said, I think that number is going to continue to climb now with Kirk Reesa and uh, all these other pieces added to West Virginia's arsenal. And we saw that uh, West Virginia scored 79 points last game. I think they'll start getting up you know, into that 70s and into the higher end of the 70s as well here moving forward. Uh, West Virginia giving up six. 68 points, Radford giving up 67. The Highlanders shooting 47% from the field compared to 40 for the Mountaineers. 38 rebounds per game for Radford versus 37 for West Virginia. West Virginia going to have to do a good job on the glass in this game, especially in Jesse Edwards' absence. Assists dead even, 12 a game. Blocks the same for a game. Radford with the advantage with six steals per game compared to four for West Virginia. And they are also coming into the game on the four-game win streak, as I mentioned there. Let's take a look at the standout players for each of these clubs. And for Radford, I think you got to lead off the discussion with Kenyon Giles. Great point guard for them. Leads them both in points and assists, 15 points per game, 3 assists per game. Also shooting 91% from the free throw line and 42% from the field. So West Virginia going to have to keep their eye on Giles in this game for sure. But he's not the only Radford Highlander that can fill it up. As also you have Brian Antoine scoring 11 points per game and leading the team in steals with 1.5 per game. And he can really shoot the basketball as well. 43% from the three-point line. Great percentage there. Also over 90% from the free throw line and 93%. And then also, let's not leave out another double-digit scorer for the Radford Highlanders Club this season, and that's Daquan Smith, also at the guard position, 14 points per game for him as well, and he shoots nearly 40% from the three-point line as well. So a lot of Highlanders right there can really fill it up, especially from beyond the arc. Going to have to keep our eyes on a lot of those guys, especially at a game where West Virginia just gave up such a strong performance from a three-point shooter in Davis there for UMass. Hopefully West Virginia is better on their closeouts and better guarding the perimeter in this game. Game. Chandler Turner, another shooter for Radford, currently shooting 59% from three-point range on the season, and he's just below double-digit scoring on the season at 9.5 points per game. And then, of course, in the paint, Radford is led by Justin Archer, who leads them in rebounds with 8.5 per game and does a good job scoring in his own right as well, eight points to go along with those 8.5 rebounds. And then the big man in the middle there for the Highlanders will be DeAndre Pierce, leads the team in blocks with two per game, and he's obviously the biggest piece on this Radford roster. He goes 6'10". I think the next in line is about 6'7". So West Virginia should have an advantage height-wise in some areas, even in Jesse Edwards' absence. So hopefully West Virginia is able to take advantage of that in this game. But Radford certainly showcases a good offense coming into this one. And Darius Nichols is going to look to get a win over his former club here in West Virginia. So let's take a look at the Mountaineers statistics individually heading into this game. And then I will wrap up with a prediction here before we get ready to close out this episode of the CRW Hoops podcast. And then lastly, looking at the Mountaineers team statistics. Now, I mentioned it briefly there. Kirk Kreese, I guess officially the team's leading scorer, 20 points per game in his lone performance. Quinn Slezinski still right there with 17.3 points per game. 40% from the three-point line for Kirk Kreese in that performance. So great outside shooting from him. Quinn Slezinski's done a good job of that all season, 37%. Noah Farrakhan, as we talked about in his one performance there off the bench, 15 points in 18 minutes before fouling out of the contest. So excited to see him get to play again. We mentioned the unfortunate absence of Jesse Edwards, who was you know 15 point per game score and nine rebounds for the Mountaineers and two blocks led the Mountaineers in rebounds and blocks on the season. So certainly going to be a tough loss there to deal with. But West Virginia hopefully you know now at least has a cook a cook playing 
you know, 20 plus minutes in the previous game. So hopefully he's ready to have an expanded role. And I think Pat Sumnick has shown some flashes this season. So hopefully those guys are ready to step up in a big way as we look at some of the other West Virginia numbers there. Uh, those are some other guys that you need to w- look for um, in this game, I think, that could score more than they have at this point in the season. But uh, for now, you know, it's really the same familiar faces for West Virginia as far as double digit scores. It's been Jesse Edwards and Quinn Sazinski. But now you get Kirk Reese and Noah Farrakhan joining them in that category. And I suspect after this game against Radford, we will have Raekwon Battle there as a double-digit scorer as well. I'm expecting, you know, 15-plus at least from Raekwon Battle in this game, and that should really bolster the West Virginia offense. So, you know, it's a little bit of a give-and-take, I guess, for West Virginia in this one. You lose Jesse Edwards, but you're hopefully debuting Raekwon Battle, so hopefully that's enough for you to be able to pull off this victory over Radford, but I guess it's my turn to give my opinion as to if I think they'll be able to do so. Let's wrap up this episode with my prediction for the upcoming 11th game of the 2023-2024 men's basketball season. All right, it's that time. It's prediction time. As for this one for the Mountaineers, I've actually got a lot of faith in this one to be able to pull this off, especially uh, given the fact that Raekwon Battle, I'm expecting him to make his debut in this one for West Virginia. And if he does, I think that's really going to provide a boost, you know, not only for West Virginia scoring on the floor, their offense in general, but I think, you know, team morale, it's someone we've all been waiting to debut. It's someone the fans are going to rally behind. Having this game in Morgantown, the Coliseum should be rocking with him on the floor. All of that's advantage West Virginia. I know not having Jesse Edwards is probably going to hurt, and it's going to hurt, you know, over over the next month, but I think in this game they'll be able to manage just enough to be able to get this win, and I've got West Virginia getting the win, and I've got them scoring 80 plus points. I think West Virginia is going to win this game 83-77 to 77 over Radford, get their fifth win of the season, and expect a really good performance from Raekwon Battle in this one for West Virginia. So those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours. Share them in the comments there if you're tuned into the video version, either on the Country Roads webcast YouTube, or there on the web at wvsportsnow.com, where you can also find our program to go along with a ton of great Mountaineer sports content you can find there. We appreciate you tuning in to the video version or listening on the audio side if you took it in that way on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, you name it. Just search Country Roads Webcast. We appreciate you tuning in these episodes any way you do so and we'll continue to have them in the near future if you want to find out when they're releasing. Just be sure to follow us on social media. We're on X at WVU Country Roads and then Country Roads Webcast on Facebook and Instagram and we'll continue to cover this men's basketball season as it progresses here on the CRW Hoops podcast. Looking forward to a fun West Virginia game here coming up on December 20th. Like we said, 7 o'clock tip there on ESPN+. Plus. Hopefully watching the debut of Raekwon Battle and taking in a West Virginia basketball victory. We'll see how it turns out. We'll be back to talk about it with you guys following that game here on the CRW Hoops podcast. Having said that, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz. And until next time, let's go Mountain. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those... Oh